Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well in these crazy times. This is my Wilson 6195 racket review, focusing on the K-Factor, which is what I'm playing with in this video, but also going through the heritage of the Wilson Pro Staff 61 classic line. And it's um, been around for 30 years, one of the most popular rackets on the men's pro tour. Comes in at a hefty but headlight balance that doesn't really require any customization. They usually just add a little bit of lead tape, perhaps some silicone in the handle. And for most club players this is a quite heavy frame, but the headlight feel makes it a bit easier to use than many other frames that are this heavy. And the swing weight is not unmanageable for decent players. Uh, it's not the easiest racket to use, but it's been going strong for close to 30 years. Still very popular among the pros. Guys like Juan Martin del Potro, Philip Kohlschreiber, Kyle Edmund, Dan Evans, Roberto Bautista Agut, and das Dusan Lajovic, and many more. The Pro Staff Classic was the racket that started it all. It came in two string patterns. Kept going with this kind of two string pattern format until it was discontinued in 2015 or 16. They had a 1618 pattern and an 1820 pattern. When they reissued the model in 2017, it uh, only came back as an 1820 string pattern, probably because it's an easier sell. A 95 square inch head size racket with a lot of weight on it is still is a tough sell in today's spin focused game where play where rackets are getting lighter and lighter. So I think they couldn't sell it in two string patterns. It didn't make any viable financial sense. In this review I used the K-Factor Edition, it's my second favorite after the 6195 N-Code, which was my first real player racket, so I probably have some kind of old feelings towards that one, but it's also the softest one and the plushest, which is why I like it the most. If you have any details or your own opinions about these different versions or the, these different rackets, please do so in the comments below. Most of the frames, as you might know, are very close in specs, it's around 332 grams and with a 10 to 12 points headlight balance. So that's really where the specs are for pretty much all of these rackets. Then the swing weights might differ a bit from 330 to 340 and um, they're very close in specs. It's mainly a matter of feel when you choose which version you would go for. If you're keen on trying them I or trying any kind of 6195, I wouldn't be too worried about choosing a specific model you can just take any one of them and you will get an idea of how it plays and then you might if you really like it you might want to deep down a little bit into what kind of um, playability you're looking for or the swing weight and so on the pro staff 6195 classic the black yellow and red one was quite a raw frame a lot of feedback and connection to the ball good amount of power pretty decent spin especially of the 1618 pattern and many racket nerds really love this racket the best. It could also be a bit because it was the first one, I'm not sure, but it has a really connected feel to the ball. And uh, like most first editions in the tennis industry, this one has probably the, the rawest feeling. We have worked in the least amount of technology into the frame. The follow-up, the Hyper Pro Staff 6195, played pretty similar to the original, had a slightly lower stiffness, a more muted feel for sure. Some players like that, Del Potro did, so he chose this one. And the Encode 6195 is the plushest and, in my opinion, the best feeling edition. Also has the lowest stiffness of mid-60s. The K factor that I'm using in this playtest is the stiffest and most powerful of the bunch. Might not be the best choice for sensitive elbows and wrists, but it does pack a punch, so it's much easier to generate power with than the encode. Uh, the BLX 2010 version offered a really nice feel as well. Slightly higher stiffness than the encode, a bit more manageable swing weight. And then they updated the BLX with the Amplifield Edition in 2012. It's a kind of candy cane paint job. It's my least uh, favorite looking frame. It had a pretty high swing weight, a little bit stiffer feel than the first edition of the BLX with the red, black, gold colors. And the last version of the bunch was the 2014 Parallel Drilling Edition. The idea with the Parallel Drilling technology was to increase the sweet spot thanks to more string movement. I'm not sure it worked. Some players have reported a slight increase in forgiveness. I'm not sure after having played all of these. That's the one that they also reissued in 2017. 
uh, with the inverted white red colors I think they wanted to uh, bring it back to please the fans there are a lot of die-hard fans of the 6195 series of rackets for a good reason it's very playable frame it does work better for advanced players with good footwork and technique of course you really need to attack the ball with this frame has a small sweet spot heavyweight but if you have the game for it and you're hitting maybe a flatter ball because I really think it works best when you hit a bit more flat it can really be a great frame and that's why it's still used today by both club players and professional players and um, I really still like it I think I need a bit more forgiveness for my game but when I'm playing well, I really play well with this frame and I did enjoy this uh, K-Factor playtest a lot. I especially enjoyed it on serves, volleys and approach shots. Felt I had ultimate control but still enough pop to put away the ball. Rallying it with it from the baseline could be a bit more demanding. Very nice on the slice, obviously like all the 6195s. Uh, but the head size and the string pattern isn't very forgiving so if you have trouble finding the sweet spot this is not the racket for you when you're moving towards the net you're hitting flatter shots it's very nice it felt pretty comfortable despite the high stiffness of a high 60 stiffness rating strung it is the stiffest of the bunch and it's not the one i would choose from all of these uh, but it's one of the ones i like more for this playtest I used it with Luxlon Olu Power 1.25 gauge. Uh, I would probably restring it with a hybrid, perhaps a natural gut in the mains and uh, Olu Power in the crosses, which a lot of pros use with this particular frame or uh, maybe vice versa, I'm not sure yet, but a, a hybrid I think is recommended for these a bit stiffer, more control oriented frames. You open up a bit more pocketing, a bit more comfort from the racket and a bit more power as well. I also like thinner polys in these more control oriented rackets, can really bite the ball a bit more, gives you a bit more comfort, feels a bit more connected. Yes, you might have more string breakage with a thinner gauge, but I think it's actually worth it if you can restring or you're not worried about restringing costs because the feeling of a thinner gauge poly is really quite nice and something I'd recommend you to try. So to summarize, this is not a racket for you who rely heavily on topspin, more if you're a flatter, aggressive player, a bit like a Del Potro, a Federer, one of those guys who can hit big, take control of the rally and, and then go from there. You can look at Kyle Edmund, how he uses his frame, hits this massive forehand. I think it really helps when you want to inject power into kind of flatter game. You can play with top spin, you can look at Dan Evans and Kyle Edmund as two players that can hit with a lot of spin and still play with this frame. But then the margin for error is even smaller, so I'm really impressed with how they can use that kind of game style with this small head size and tight string pattern. So that's very impressive. If you haven't tried the 6195 in any iteration, you should definitely give it a go. It's a really fun racket to use. I really enjoy it and I keep coming back to this line of rackets. It just fits my style pretty well and it's a really fun frame if you want to go for the attack and finish up the point. That's about it for this Tennis Nerd Racket review. Thanks for all the likes, shares and subscribes to the channel. It's a bit tricky time now in Corona and uh, I appreciate every, all the help I can get to spread the word about the Tennis Nerd. I hope you can all get back to the court sometime soon and that the tennis can resume all around the world again. But first of all we have to put the safety first and um, be inside and stay safe and uh, take care of our fellow citizens. When we get out of this you might want to change your racket or you're maybe already considering that. Please check out my racket consultation service in the Tennis Nerd shop tennisnerd.net slash shop and you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash tennisnerd where you get unique content every week and it's only two bucks a month that's it for now have a nice day and stay safe